this is new since my last trip here. Got a nice statue or memorial for Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Ed Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin actually still lives here in Florida and is fairly active on Facebook. The trees in this garden are all descendants of seeds that were taken aboard Apollo 14 that went to June back in the 1970s. Apollo 15 launched July 26, 1971, and I was actually here at the Kennedy Space Center to watch it. So I would have been about 14 years old at that time. But I remember we watched it, which was from then the Holiday Inn, where Walter Cronkite and the astronauts, nurses, among other dignitaries, used to stay. That Holiday Inn has now been taken over by a church, though the buildings are still there right on the Indian River, about 10 miles from the launch pad. It took over 30 seconds for the sound of the launch to reach us, but boy did it reach us. John Young was the commander, and the well-known road John Young Parkway in Orlando, of course, was named after him. He was also one of the first test pilots for the new space shuttle, and landed one that had been launched from a specially modified 747, landing on Earth purely under glide power with no engines or fuel. He and his co-pilot both had ejection seats and parachutes just in case since the device had never been landed before. Ed White, Roger Chaffee, and Gus Grissom died in a launch pad fire called the Apollo 1, January 27, 1967. Aside from wiring that was overly complicated, another thing they learned is that they were operating with a 100% oxygen atmosphere under one atmosphere of pressure. The Apollo capsule was designed to use 100% oxygen under approximately one third of an atmosphere of pressure in space, and it never occurred to them that this was too much oxygen to be using on the ground, which made a fire a very quick process when it occurred. One spark could burn everybody before anybody got a chance to get anywhere near the hatch. This is the bottom of the Saturn V booster. At the end of the Apollo program, they ran out of money basically to go to the moon, but they had already built three Saturn Vs, one of which is on display here at the Kennedy Space Center one in Huntsville, Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center there and one in Houston at the Johnson Spacecraft Center. What could have flown to the moon are now museum pieces suffering from the effects of corrosion, never to fly again. It's a little difficult, even laid out like this, to understand how large this rocket is. When fully loaded on the launch pad, it stood 363 feet high, which is smaller than the Artemis SLS, which has had a single test flight, and significantly smaller than the SpaceX Starship, which is closer to 400 feet of height. Of course, most of these cylinders are full of fuel tanks of liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. Not today, but of course when they launched, that was what the fuel was. While the current SpaceX used liquid oxygen combined with super pressurized uh, kerosene for better fuel density. You may notice on these uh, engines, there's lots of tubing around the outside. And of course, when the fire is going, there's an awful lot of heat. So fuel is actually circulated through the skin of the engine nozzles to lower the temperature to keep them from melting when they are in use. And that technology is still in use today.
This is the third stage of the Saturn V. And just above the third stage is an adapter where the lunar module was folded up until they got into orbit when it could deploy and look more like this. The last piece before the command module is the service module, which is where the Apollo 13 explosion occurred in an oxygen tank. But it basically provided power to the command module en route to the moon and on the way back, though in the case of the Apollo 13 accident, they actually had to use power from the unused lunar module to get back to Earth. And the rocket-like device above the capsule is the escape tower to use only in the first minute or so of launch so that if there was a problem below, the theory was is that you could light this rocket and pull the command module away from the rest of the Saturn V booster system. It was tested but never used in a real emergency. In the later Apollo moon missions, they wanted to get a little bit farther from the spacecraft than their feet could safely take them. So they had this fold up electric car. Notice that the uh, tires are not pneumatic, but are just made out of springy metal. Since in the absence of an atmosphere, pneumatic tires would have a tough time surviving the elements. It was about 280 degrees Fahrenheit above zero in the sun and 280 below Fahrenheit in the shade which is a little bit tough for an air-filled rubber tire to tolerate. The spacesuits weighed over 100 pounds, so they had to make these seats big enough to accommodate that and the backpack they had to wear. And the camera, interestingly, was remotely controlled from Earth because it would be one less thing the astronauts would have to do. And as a result, the last couple of uh, lunar takeoffs were actually filmed from the camera on the lunar buggy controlled from Earth. And you can find these on YouTube, but they're pretty amazing. The actually unique things that you can see here at the Apollo Center as part of the Kennedy Space Center bus tour is they have an actual piece of the moon, a lunar rock sample that you can touch. And of course, it's been touched probably by millions of people by now. Seems like there would be a sanitizer station here somewhere. But to me anyway, this was quite the experience given the amount of money that was put into this program to retrieve hundreds of pounds of lunar samples to study. Recall that when we launched to the moon, we didn't really know if there were living microbes or anything up there. And for the first few missions, there was actually a six week quarantine where the astronauts were isolated in a trailer and in a special facility until we were sure they wouldn't get sick and die because we didn't want to contaminate the Earth. More likely we were contaminating the moon, of course. So like an old friend, we'll touch it again. There it is. Nice and polished by now. As always, thanks for your attention to the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button as that helps distribute the video more widely. Subscribe to the channel if you like and share the video on social media. I encourage you to take the opportunity to visit the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center. You should arrive before 1 p.m. to take maximum advantage of the bus tour and other exhibits that are available for you to see with lots of historic artifacts. Until next time, see you later.